Nihilistic is a developer with an interesting history. Many might remember their final few games that they made for the PS Vita. Resistance Burning Skies did not live up to the expectations set up by the prior entries, but it did prove that while highly flawed, a fun first-person shooter could be done on the handheld. Their next game was going to be a first-person shooter as well, and in many ways could have actually have been a means to find some redemption. But sadly, their portable Call of Duty game for the Vita was a complete failure. It launched with limited features, and worst of all, the controls were awful. Thankfully, their history in game development was not always as dark as their last game. With the PS3 and Xbox 360 on the rise, Nihilistic had a huge interest in making an action game in the same vein as A Devil May Cry or Ninja Gaiden. They ended up partnering with THQ to make one based on the iconic hero, Conan. Join me as we take a look back at Conan. In 1998, many former LucasArts developers broke off to form a new company called Nihilistic. Many had experience with the original Jedi Knight. Their first game was Vampire the Masquerade Redemption, an RPG based on the tabletop game of the same name. Critically, the game did pretty well and was praised for its quality. Following this game is where the studio went in an interesting direction. They began working on two different projects. One would be a Marvel fighting game, and the other would be a spin-off to a very popular Blizzard IP. Nihilistic would be creating a third-person action game set in Blizzard's StarCraft universe. Blizzard would be in more of a supervisory role and not leading the development. This game was known as StarCraft Ghost and would be a very big project to complete. Sadly, in mid-2004, the developers ceased working on Ghost, and the details surrounding this are still unclear. In 2005, they released Marvel Nemesis Rise of the Imperfects. While it did not do well critically, it definitely sparked the interest for the studio to tackle an action game. And for their next project, they set their sights on an iconic sword and sorcery hero to be the focus of it. Careful, child. Don't get too close. You could get burned. Mother Nature can be brutal when she wants to be, huh? I knew a man once who thought he could take her power and use it as his own. <laughs> Imagine that. Perhaps tonight I'll tell you a new story. A story of adventure, dark magic, and Conan. Nihilistic was very interested in making an action game, something like God of War, and found out that THQ had the license for Conan and was working on a few projects with that IP. The developers felt that the world of Conan would fit well in an action game. As a way to pitch their idea to THQ, they created a quick and simple prototype demonstrating the concept to the publisher. THQ liked their work and the developers were granted the approval for the Conan action game. To stay true to the character and the world of Conan, the game needed to be violent and display lots of bloody combat. The action would throw overwhelming odds at the player as they slash their way to victory. The combat system would be the core of the experience. This led the team to look at some of the successful action games at the time, like God of War and Ninja Gaiden as inspiration. The same camera would be used to ensure a more cinematic presentation along with allowing for each piece of action to be framed in how the developers wanted to present it. While the players would not be in control of the camera with this fixed camera angle, this meant that the player could solely focus on the action, and this opened up the right analog stick to be used as a way for the player to dodge roll in any direction. As part of this, the developers wanted the controls to both be smooth and impactful with each one of Conan's combos. The system was built from the ground up to allow for the player to suddenly roll or dodge while fighting enemies. The action would take on this more freeform combat system, allowing for the players to get creative on what moves they wanted to string together. With Conan being an aggressive fighter, the team wanted to convey that in what actions the 
players could do as him. For example, the player could throw enemies around, steal their weapons, and pick up objects in the environment and use them as weapons like boulders. The weapon system would be a unique element to the action. The game allows the player to pick up any weapon and use it for themselves. Along with this, the game would allow for dual wielding, resulting in interesting combinations. Depending on what weapons the player use, they will have access to different combo trees. For example, there are completely different combos for single-handed and heavy two-handed weapons. The bulk of the gameplay would be centered around the combat system, while also allowing for other smaller elements to help break up the action, like light puzzle solving and platforming. The team wanted to strike a nice balance between challenging and fair, and use the many difficulty options to provide an experience that anyone could enjoy and select the skill level that they felt comfortable with. For the narrative, the studio looked to the established works of Robert E. Howard's stories, and created a completely original tale for the game. Nihilistic put the focus on the action for their new Conan game. God of War served as a huge inspiration for the gameplay for this title, and the developers also wanted to be faithful and respectful to the original source material. In September 2007, Conan was released to the world. Conan is an action game inspired by the likes of God of War and Devil May Cry. There's a nice variety of moves and combos for you to pull off. The bulk of the game is centered on the action. There is a general rough and clunkiness to the combat that could have benefited from more refinement. But the action is mostly enjoyable as you defeat hundreds of foes. The story is not going to win any awards, but at the very least it is entertaining, with Ron Perlman providing the voice of Conan. The visuals never really looked good when it was first released, and they have not aged well, but thankfully the music is pretty good here. Conan has its fair share of flaws and some aspects that might even annoy the player, but the action is generally fun, making this a good weekend rental type of a game. Conan has many different moves at his disposal. You have your light and heavy attacks that you can chain together to pull off deadly combos. You can also punch and grab enemies that come near you. For defense, you can roll and block. If you get your blocks just right, you can perform a counter attack, and in many cases, this will outright kill the attacking enemy. Both the sound effects and impact of your hits are decent with some nice bright spots. When hitting enemies, there's a nice distinction between hitting someone with armor and someone who does not have that equipped. The game is pretty bloody, with a heavy amount of dismemberment, much of them reserved for the brutal kill moves. Arms, legs, and heads can be hacked off, and it's over the top at times and great. What makes the combat in this special is the on-the-fly personalization that the player has in going about the combat encounters. Conan has three different fighting styles, one-handed, dual-wielding, and two-handed heavy weapons. The one-handed option allows you to hold a shield in your other hand if you so choose. Now all of this can change on the fly since you can pick up any weapon dropped by your enemies. See an enemy with an axe, you can opt to pick up two of them and hack away at your foes. The styles here have their own visual differences, along with how they are used. For example, the heavy weapons generally do more damage, but have slower attack speeds. I really enjoyed how you can start a level focusing on one stance, and then shift to something else by the end of it. From a presentation standpoint, there's some nice touches that really help to heighten the action. For example, some moves will cause slow-mo, along with some zoom-ins to really enjoy the violent destruction from your hits. Conan also follows the template set up by other action games pretty closely with its progression system. As you defeat enemies, rescue ladies, and find chests, you will earn points to unlock new combos for your three different stances. There will also be set points where you can improve your health, power, and magic meters. The power bar will charge as you hit enemies and will decrease as you take hits. If you can fill the bar, then you will go into an overdrive mode. As you progress in the campaign, you will earn different magical moves to assist you in combat. You can rain down a storm of meteors or turn people to stone, making them very easy to kill. Yeah. 
there are other forms of gameplay outside of the main combat. There's some situations where you will operate a turret and some platforming sections. The platforming is not particularly good, even though the attempt at variety is appreciated. There's a nice variety of enemies to fight, from pirates, bowmen, different heavies, and monsters. The boss fights are a bit of a mixed bag. Some are better than others, and some can go on for far too long, or have a few cheap hits. The Sand Dragon is a good example of a good boss fight in Conan. It is a multi-stage fight with quick sessions with the beast. Like I said before, the bulk of the game is focused on the combat, with some light puzzle solving sections and even some variety of needing to protect an ally. From a story standpoint, the narration is pretty good, along with the decent line delivery from Ron Perlman. The writing can be a bit odd at times, and some of it seems a bit unintentionally goofy, but either way it contributes to the entertainment value. The story is fine and entertaining enough without getting in the way of the action. Stop. Or you'll die where you stand. I'll do as I please, woman. Under whose flag do you sail? I am Conan. I serve no man. Perhaps you would serve a woman then? Service her. Aye, and gladly. Conan is a pretty fun game while also being rather flawed and frustrating at times. If this game was remastered today, I would want them to focus on refining the combat. The game has this rough and slight clunkiness to it, where some of your actions can feel imprecise because of how the game feels to operate. You will really notice this when trying to switch between enemies. There's some odd sound bugs that will have the soundtrack cutting in and out at odd times. I also found it rather hard to effectively block some of the heavy enemies. Their attacks can be very difficult to read, making it seem like like there is an opening when there actually isn't one. I will admit that this honestly could be partially my fault as well. Whenever you are hit with an arrow, you need to hit a button to pull the arrow out or you will continually lose health. This is the same button that is used to pick up a weapon. The problem is is that the game will usually favor picking up a weapon over pulling out the arrow. This means that you will lose health that you didn't need to lose, because the game prioritized the weapon over the arrow. The platforming in this game is not good. It feels very rigid and slows down the pacing. In some cases, Cases, it provides some annoying and instant death parts. I understand wanting to add this in for more variety to the gameplay, but if you're going to add something in, it should at least be decent to good. Some enemies can feel rather cheap with them stun locking you, making it hard to really get away or block. And like I mentioned before, the boss fights are a bit of a mixed bag, with some of them going on for far too long. A good example of this is with the elephant fight. It is a multi-stage fight that goes on for far too long and makes the encounter feel tedious. Lastly, I did have a glitch where I got hit hit and I couldn't get back up, and the game just killed me there. Conan at times can feel equal parts fun and frustrating. Along with this, there's a decent amount of challenge that seems to come from cheap design, like enemies easily being able to gang up on you. But generally when you are slashing and cutting off heads, it's a blast to play. Conan is both a flawed yet fun action game. It follows the established formula very closely and provides some fun, unique elements to help it stand out. I really enjoyed having three different stances to play around with, along with being able to pick up any of the weapons dropped by my enemies. I never got tired of the violent action, though I did wish that the feel to the combat was just a half or full step more refined. There is a clunkiness here that prevents it from feeling better than it could be. Conan has its issues, but the fun combat makes this game fit into the perfect weekend rental type of a game. I recommend Conan. If you are interested in being notified of new videos, please hit the subscribe button and bell. And if you would like to support the channel and get early access to content, please check out my Patreon. All of the links will be at the end of this video and within the description. And thank you very much for watching.